Honourable Member for Warringah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I rise today to speak to the important counter-terrorism legislation amendment prohibited hate symbols and other measures bill 2023. And I will be supporting this bill. It is an important step to stomp out hate speech across our country. The rise we have seen of the far right, white supremacist and anti-Semitic ideology in recent years has been alarming. We are also all too familiar with the hateful ideologies born of, the, of Islamic State and the damage that has caused across the world, and even more so the rise in our Islamophobia and, and that kind of hate speech as well. So we need to make sure that the, the and the terrifying is the willingness of those indoctrinated by hateful ideologies of all types to proudly display, display symbols of hate. These symbols are used to intimidate, harass, cause fear and make many in our community feel unsafe. This bill establishes new criminal offences in several respects. Firstly, it criminalises the public displays of or trading in goods bearing prohibited Nazi and Islamic State symbols. Secondly, it criminalises using a carriage service, such as the postal or courier services, to possess or disseminate violent extremist material. Thirdly, it expands the existing offence of advocating terrorism to include instructing on the doing of a terrorist act and praising the doing of a terrorist act in specific circumstances. Lastly, it removes the sunsetting requirement for classifying terrorist organisations as such. I commend the government for proposing an amendment to the bill in recent days to include banning people doing the Nazi salute in public. So we do need this bill, and it is important because it is something where um, we need to address that. Um, it, you know, many in this place will argue it's about keeping our communities safe, but it is about saying what are the standards and the values that we wish to uphold. Um, and hateful ideologies have no place uh, in a liberal democracy and in Australia. So it is about protecting our democracy. But I do say that with a little bit of concern when I consider the bill that the bill that the government and the coalition have just voted in favour for, where we are uh, great consequences may flow <coughs> from these types of crimes under this proposed legislation, such as a 14-year-old finding themselves stripped of their citizenship and sent from Australia, even if born in Australia. So I am on the one hand, uh, incredibly supportive that we ban and make a criminal offence of this hateful speech and symbols. Um, but I am concerned when I consider the other legislation just passed as to what the ramifications of every uh, conduct that is obviously made a crime. Um, what we do need to set, look at is, in protecting our democracy, uh, we need to keep ahead of morphing and changing threats to national security. To quote the ASIO Director General Mike Burgess, as a nation, we need to reflect on why some teenagers are hanging Nazi flags and portraits of the Christchurch killer on their bedroom walls, and why others are sharing beheading videos. Just as importantly, we must reflect on what we can do about it. And obviously, when we're talking teenagers, we have to then acknowledge the consequences the government and the opposition wish to flow in relation to children. But I do echo the sentiments, and this bill goes in some way to addressing the concern that Mr Burgess outlines. I know these are concerns that we all share in this House as well. We can stop the display and dispersal of overt hate symbols and speech that are vulgar, have no place in Australian society. Only last month, three Sydney men were charged with behaving in an offensive manner in or near a public place or school and knowingly displaying by public act a Nazi symbol without excuse. This alleged behaviour took place outside the Sydney Jewish Museum in Darlinghurst. The museum is a treasured place for many Sydney siders. It includes exhibits relating to the Holocaust, during which six million uh, Jews were killed under the Nazi regime. Although this case is still before the courts, it's exactly the sort of behaviour that symbols of hate can help inspire. The Nazi salute should be banned in public as the government now proposes to include in this bill. We must never forget why these symbols of hate are what they are today, what they represent. Millions lost their lives. The pain is still felt through the generations of their descendants around the world and the few elderly survivors of the Nazi atrocities who are still with us today. 
Such symbols play a role in indoctrinating those who would and have caused harm to this day. And I note also that in recent, the recent conflict between Israel and Hamas has caused incredible angst amongst many in our Jewish and Muslim communities. Symbols of hate have been used to intimidate and harass. We must call this behaviour out. We must, in this place, as politicians, as leaders of our communities, ensure a respectful discourse. We must ensure social cohesion and not inflame already red-hot tensions. We must ensure social cohesion. As a successful multicultural nation, where over half of our population are in fact dual citizens, we must not import foreign conflict and value our social cohesion, value our multicultural aspect. I know that many of my constituents in Warringah share my concern about social cohesion and want more to be done to stamp out the hatred of extremist, of extremist ideologies and how they manifest. So I support this bill, but I urge the government to continue to examine what further legislation may be needed in this area to stop the spread of hatred and extremist ideologies. Writing for the Australian Strategic Policy Institute in 2022, former police officer Christy Milligan argues that implementation of legislation such as the bill before us today is critical for law enforcement agencies to effectively manage existing and emerging risks associated with extremist activity. Ms Milligan's research highlights that there are many other far-right symbols beyond those identified in this legislation today that also can be used as tools for recruitment, messaging across social media and causing intimidation in public settings. Other symbols that have often been identified on social media are used for people of certain ideology to uh, identify with one another, to, to, to incite that vilification. So it's vital that we ensure our legislative framework is able to give law enforcement agencies the tools they need to eradicate such hatred. So it's clear that there's going to be need a constant review as to where the, what hate symbols should be included. The proper tools are needed to keep our communities safe. We must ensure that these symbols cannot be used to inspire or recruit for criminal or even terrorist acts. We know that what such inspiration can lead to. We must never forget that it was an indoctrinated white supremacist born here in Australia who killed 51 Muslim worshippers in March 2019 in the terrorist attacks in Christchurch in New Zealand. We want to ensure that these symbols cannot inspire these horrific acts of terror ever again. The bill, this bill is a step in that direction. I know the government takes this issue seriously. The legislation is needed and needed now. But more must be done in the evolving and challenging th threatening and the threatscape that inspires extremist ideologies. I urge the government to further outline measures they will take on this issue, particularly in the monitoring of online content and holding social media companies responsible. We cannot let hate and division win. And so I urge the government to stay vigilant.